So Sis. it just didn't seem quite right, to put it bluntly, and that's why I called it. Um, but mostly because we've got to find out what this control problem is. That's sort of important, controlling the sub. It's up there with life support. Um, and so we'll be working tonight on that. Uh, and if anybody would like to help out, we're going to do. We're going to charge up the platform as well. So we'll do the low pressure air. Um, we're going to go swap the pods and see if we can follow the problem to diagnose where it is. Uh, we have spare control pods. They're not the easiest things to change. So we'd have to pull the sub alongside and have the ship lift them. And yeah, Kyle, can you give me a little? Let's get a little rundown here. Yeah, there's orange two halves there, kind of the sphere. There's one on either side. That's kind of what we're focusing on right now. They're the brains. So inside the pod are motor controllers, uh, a switch, Damn. some power supplies, some relays. And so it gets data from the sub. And it was not um, consistently communicating. So it worked a lot, and then all of a sudden it stopped wanting to talk. Um, that could be a wiring problem. Um, it could also be a problem with the, one of the switches or components inside there, or wiring related to that. Um, these things, we've been using them now for three years, so it, they've been pretty durable, but you never know. So we'll be spending uh, much of the evening working on that. If anyone would like to be out on the platform, raise their hand and come on up or talk to me afterwards. But maybe you know, we, can, we can run some shifts out there. The, the you know, your guess is as best as mine. I'm not too sure exactly if this is the main reason why the tragic incident happened and everyone lost their lives. You know, it could have been anything. Long story short, every day they did have some problems and we tried to fix every little thing to make sure everything was perfect for our opportunity. It's Titan. Oh, it is Titan. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. For days, the world watched on, hoping the Titan submersible would be found with all five men alive on board. But today we've learnt, for all that time, there was no hope at all. The discovery of debris on the ocean floor has led experts to conclude the vessel suffered a catastrophic failure in the first hours of the dive. A second tragedy at the site of the Titanic. This morning, searching in an ocean of unknowns, a rover found pieces of the missing sub, indicating it imploded. The debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. The debris field was found less than 500 metres from the bow of the Titanic. Five major pieces were discovered, including its nose cone, the landing frame and the tailpiece of the submersible with the Ocean Gate logo. It means the banging noises that were detected for days could not have been the missing crew. Tonight, the US Navy confirmed it heard an implosion in the area where the sub was operating only hours after it lost communication. On board, British billionaire adventurer Hamish Harding who'd travelled to space and the deepest place on Earth, the Mariana Trench. In a statement, his family said, if we can take any small consolation from this tragedy, it's that we lost him doing what he loved. Also on board, French historian Paul-Henri Najalay and Pakistani businessman Shazada Dawood and his son Suleiman, the 19-year-old's aunt today, claiming he was terrified about the trip but wanted to please his dad for Father's Day. I'm also sure that he would not have taken his son on board if he thought there was uh, really, you know, a, a, a serious level of danger. 96 hours since the Titan lost contact and the Coast Guard confirming what we all feared. The question is now, how did this happen? Those questions about regulations that apply and the standards, that's going to be, I'm sure, uh, focus of future review. The finger of blame is being pointed at the sub's final victim, Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush, whose wife is a descendant of Titanic victims. I've broken some rules to make this. I think I've broken them with, with logic and good engineering behind me, the carbon fiber and titanium. There's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. Rush is accused of cutting corners and avoiding regulation, fearing it would stifle his innovation. We certainly don't want to stop the entrepreneurial uh, developments because quite often they develop technologies that are major steps 
because they're not hindered by the regulations. The director of the film Titanic and deep sea explorer James Cameron comparing this to the world's most famous maritime disaster. The captain was warned there were icebergs ahead, it was a moonless night, and he plowed ahead. It claimed 1,500 lives, now five more lost to the ocean by their captivation with that doomed voyage. In Boston, Alison Petrowski, Nine News. Oh, that's sad. <clears throat> that is sad.